presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Eddie in Bookerton. Hey, Eddie, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. It is a treasure to have TFNN every hour during the trading day to be there to help you, to guide you, and even to give you some peace of mind or like that, that somebody else is there with you while you're, while you're trading this crazy market, either well, up or down. Well, listen, we appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here because we wouldn't be out here, folks, if we didn't have all you guys, gals, tigers and tigresses as clients. And, you know, the market teaches you every single day, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Wow. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Let's make it a great month. September 1st, man. You're going to love it. Be impeccable with your word. Replace fear with love. The human mind is like a fertile ground where seeds are continually being planted. When you're impeccable with your word, your mind is no longer a fertile place for the words that come from fear. Your mind is only fertile for the words that come from love. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 79, NASDAQ down 57, S&P's flat. They're going to go green any second here because we get, uh, this is the battle's been shaping up. I mean, we, we came off this low. Uh, bottom line, uh, and we're right at the highs right now. Gold, gold contract down $19.20 trade at $17.07 an ounce. We have silver down $0.21, cents, $17.67 an ounce. Light sweet crude off $3.35 at $86.18 a barrel. Notes and bonds. This is some big numbers out here, man. You get the 10-year note. Trading down 26 at 116.02. The 30 years off a full two points plus six ticks at 134.07. You get the 10 year right now, folks, trading yielding 3.25%. And King Dollar, King Dollar is over its highs. You're up 886 ticks. You're at 109.586. The euro is at 99. The yen is at 140. And the British pound is at 115 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. This is a fun one. We're right at it, baby. So let's go to the E-minis first and look at it. I'll show you right where we are. Because my take is that this is still not going to hold, man. So this is going to be intriguing watching this shake out because what you have here, so look what we have, okay? Bottom line, you, we made a low today in the E-mini of 39.03, okay? The number it was trying to get over, uh, you know, and that, you had to hit. This is what you said. We, we, we came off. We didn't come off with, with volume, but we had volume like 40 minutes ago. The first time that we popped over that high, we had volume. We have 60,000 contracts, okay? Well, what just happened is that we just tested that 60,000 with 44, okay? Now, what happens is that you're still over it, so, you know, you didn't have a failure on price. You did have a contraction of volume, however, by 33%. When you have 33% contraction of volume and you still have 50 minutes left in the marketplace and you know, what you're trading here, so you're trading right up to ice. This is really cool just to understand how this shakes out. Let me put it in the, where is it? No, I go to the spy, that's what I'll do. So you'll see how this sets up here, man. So you can see what we did here. There's ice right there. Just put it, put its head right into it. So the that's 395.04, and we just hit 395.33. Now, this this will take a bit to get through it. Uh, my the reason I'm saying that I suspect you're still going to get some selling at the at the end is that number one, you come up to ice. Number two, the dollar is still up over its highs and 
bottom line, we'll see where it shakes out. You know, that's the SPY and the X100, same type of setup, because that's a normal occurrence when you come up to uh, ice, folks. That's that's how markets like to trade. And, well, you can see, this is interesting, the, the, the Qs didn't make it. And so this is what's really cool about this also. And the Qs, let's see, the first time up was 1.6 million. The second time was 1.3, you know. The Qs didn't make it yet, though. The ice on the Qs is 299.20. We hit uh, 298.23, I believe. Yeah, we did. So the Qs haven't made it yet. Now, if we go over to the dollar, we take a look at the dollar. This is, <laughs> this dollar's been hanging up here, and the bottom line, it looks like this dollar, you know, bottom line wants to not only get higher, um, but we'll see whether it gets away from this high, because it's already got away from it pretty well. The high, the first high we're talking about out here is 109.294. So, no, well, you're only 300 ticks above it, but 300 ticks is 300 ticks. The reason that I'm bringing this up, because if you actually, let's say we get, 300 ticks is not enough to say, okay, you're away from the swing, right? We go up another thousand ticks, that is gonna tell you and the market will go crazy that is gonna tell you that this thing is gonna go for its all-time high, and its all-time high is, I believe, 121.53 or something, let's see. 121.030. As you can see, you know, the bottom line is that there's not much in the way, you know, once we took out the 103.820 mark, there's not much basic, well, there's, there's not a lot, you get a supply line, but bottom line, the next swing point is almost at those highs. So, you know, I suspect what we're going to see um, is that it looks like to me that that thing actually wants to go there. So uh, Dow up 82. Na um, e mini just went positive. You get the NASDAQ uh, down 43 NQs, which is nothing, by the way. OK, because the bottom line, if we go look at the NQs, you know, this thing was down big and, you know, we'll see where it shakes out. So, you know, you get, you, if we close here, what, do I, what, do, what, what you do have is that you get a nice little hammer that's happening. Uh, if we go through, you know, yesterday when I started the show, I went through that, the, the point, the 1 to 1.382 ABC structure. Well, the, the SPY did it. The SPY, the, the 1 to 1 ABC was 392. We went to 390, rejected it at 395. Now, the Qs didn't make it. The Qs, the 1 to 1.382 in the Qs is 286.83. And thus far, you've only made 292.95. You know? So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this baby shakes out. Meaning that can it hold price here? Uh, can, can, it, can it totally all get green? And then do you get a bounce tomorrow? Now, the, pro the problem with getting a bounce tomorrow is that it's going to be on light volume. So, um, you know, we'll see how it shakes out. Dow. Dow Industrial's up 81. The Nasdaq's down 67. S&P's a flat. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. 
Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrial's up 52. The Nasdaq's down 81. S&P's are down 4. Let's go inside the Dow Industrial's and take a look at the strength versus the weakness out here today. Uh, Point-wise, bingo. There we go. So point-wise, we have you have uh, Home Depot putting uh, 27 positive points. Amgen 26. United Health 23. McDonald's 22. Taken away from it. Boeing minus 45. Uh, Salesforce 22. Chevron 18. If we go into the NDX 100, we take a look at the strength versus the weakness inside the NDX. Regeneron's up 3%. Vertex is up 2.6. You get uh, raw stores up uh, 2.6 and Biogen's up 2.3. Interesting. Three of the uh, bio, bio stocks taken away from it. Oh, this stock is so, this is unbelievable actually. Yeah, you, we get, we get Zscale at first down 8%. NVIDIA's down 8%. You get Datadog down 7.2. This thing, OKTA, this is like, want to see something sick, folks, okay? This is unbelievable, actually. So picture this. The high for the year is 276. The low is 58. I was looking at this this morning, and the thing that is, well, here, let, let's bring it up first so you can see this, because this is like crazy, man. This blows my mind, actually. And the reason it does, so look at this. This stock had a high of $293. That high was generated on the uh, May of uh, 2021, okay? No, it's, no, one second. April, April of 2021, right? Now it's an ABC down. I mean, it's a monster ABC down. I mean, it looks like it's going out of business. Now, this is what's so crazy, right? So I'm saying, I'm looking at it, and even at this price, at this price, so, they ramped this thing up. It's a company that takes in 1.8 billion, but still, okay, so check this out. Look, look at how this works. The more money that they kept taking in, the more money they kept losing. Like, really? That's a business model? You know? So the bottom line is that they, they're going to lose this year 72 cents a share, and they're going to take in um, eight, no, 1.2 to eight billion dollars. And it's an application software, I believe. It develops inter internet application software. The company offers uh, automated user management, integration, mobile identification, multi-factor authentication. Um, bottom line is that you can see it's a mess, man. I mean, that's about as intense as you can get uh, when, <laughs> when you're taking a look at the aspect of they ramp something up to some incredible 
number, right? And it's toast, man. I mean, toast. It, it just, it, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's so hard to comprehend why someone would buy something that is losing money hand over fist. Like, it's just unbelievable. Uh, it just blows my mind. But bottom line is that that's what you have happening. So we'll see where the you know rest of it's going to go. So let's go take take a look at the gold market. See, because we know that bottom line where the dollar goes is important for the gold market, right? So what you have here is that we the last low that was generated in gold was 19, yeah, 19, 1696. Well, we hit 1699 today. And we did 189,000 contracts, which is a lot of contract volume, man. That's about a lot of contract volume. You can see like, by looking at this. Actually, let me do this. I'll go to the GLD, because what will happen there is that that'll get us a decent understanding of, yeah, see, that already broke the slow. So let me pull this back into a weekly or a monthly and see where we're at. Okay, so you're into, look at this, see, so we're already into the highs of the March lows of COVID. This can be a problem, man. Yep, this can be a problem. We'll see how much deeper I can get into it. So the, the number is 159.37. Now, what the difference is, see, when you look at this, you always got to remember with the GLD is that the GLD, when we go down here, this, that's two years ago, right? And you can see the, the expense ratio, so two years is eight-tenths of one percent. So that's always important to understand that the GLD, you know, when you're matching up the charts, you really want to remember how the GLD has four-tenths of one percent every year that it loses on the context of fees. You know, that's, that's what it does. If we go to the XAU and the HUI, we take a look at the XAU and the HUI out here. Bring this back. Yeah, this is a problem. Let's see. This might be going after the highs. This is probably going after the highs. Yeah, it is. Well, actually, that's the monthly. Yeah. This could be very well a big problem. See, it, well, as we're looking at this, this is like, okay, <laughs> that 121 on the dollar, man, if this is game, you know, we're already 14 points. No. No, six points. We're already six points into the, into the high volume bar. If I put this up, you'll see. The bar is a monster, but even so, that's pretty dangerous, man. Here's the bar right there. That bar has uh, 1.3 million shares. Last month we came down with uh, 560 million. But what I don't like is that how you, you've, you're you already into it. Uh, yeah, you're into it by nine points, man. So the HUI, I suspect, is going to be the exact same thing. Let's go take a look at a few of the big dogs out here. We'll go to Amazon first. Amazon, the gap's not full yet. This will get filled. It's into the gap now. So we hit uh, 123.66 today. The gap is 122.84. That will get filled. Let's go to Disney, and we'll take a look at Disney, see if that, that has, also has a gap. Okay, so that gap, the first gap, the second gap is 109.22. We hit 110.22. 25. The bigger gap was 112.67. But you can see, so see this one right here on Disney? So let's picture if you, if you thought that Disney did, did uh, you know, hit a bottom right now. What happens is that if you thought that, to, this is, I'm talking technically now, what you'd want it to do is to close over 112.67. It's only 111.92. Because when you're filling a gap, what you want to see, folks, is that you want to see number one, that the gap gets filled, and then you got to close basically over that because what, what's happening is that the 
that is the rejection. That's the fill of the gap, the rejection of the gap, and then you're going forward. That's, that's how you, you're going to read those things when you're coming down into it. Let's go into the uh, Microsoft and see where Microsoft is going out here. Uh, Microsoft right now, that traded down 278. You got 16 million shares. You know, you're coming to the bottom of this... Uh, Put this up in a monthly. You can, we can use all the monthlies now because, uh, you know, bottom line, August is over. Well, Microsoft still looks like it wants to go to 241 again, or 258. 877-927-6648. We have the Dow. Dow industrials are uh, up 12. NASDAQ is down 100. S&P is off $99.59 uh, points. Come right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down six. Nasdaq's off uh, 112. S&Ps are off 12. Uh, the next bar here is going to get interesting, folks, because what we just did, we failed. Um, let me pull this up again so you can see how this shakes out. I'm going to bring up the NQs first. So what you're going to see, okay, so we, we talked about the last time you had volume, okay, with the, the bar that took out the swing didn't have volume, okay? Now, that being said, this is what, this is what you have, which is really cool and, you know, well, I, I, I love price and volume, so. <laughs> anyway, so what happened here is this. You, you failed at the bar that had the, the 14,000. You got to remember, so you had 14,000, the bar before that, um, yeah, we had 21,000, then you went above it with 14,000, and you, were, you only had 14,000 at the breakout. Now, when we came down, though, on that bar, you only had 12,000. So the 12,000 is actually going against that. The problem with the, it's the time of day now, 
and you fail to hold this 12,237. So this is going to get kind of intriguing because the bar that we did come down on didn't have a lot of juice. So this bar here that we're talking about right now, and right now this bar, we're only in a minute into this bar, this is going to be an important bar. You know, because what you didn't have, which, you, which I've showed you plenty of times, you did not have a huge amount of sellers, even though you just saw the NQs basically go down another 50 points in a heartbeat. But that's what the NQs do, man. And as, of course, as the... The S&Ps, you know, went down 12, okay? Now, so let's go take a look at the S&Ps. We'll do the same exercise out here. So here, yeah, the S&Ps, the S&Ps are saying that the NQ is not gonna hold. Because we know, so watch, we know that the NQ is weaker than the S&Ps. And what's happening is that the S&Ps are ahead of the NQ right now. Because you see what would happen here? So the bar that had the volume, that had uh, 60,000 contracts. We get above it with 46. You hit the high with 39. We came off it with 36. But see that see the, the that the spy that the E mini's not holding. When the E mini doesn't hold, folks, that's telling you, okay? Because what you do, you're gonna, you know, you, you basically the you know that the Nasdaq has the NDX 100 has been tremendously weaker than the S and P. So when the S and P goes first. And you, you see, you don't see it happen a lot, but you do see it, and it gives you a quick edge, man. I mean, that's why you, you personally, I bring up both of them. I like trading the NQs more than the S and P, um, and it, half the reason is because of exactly what I just explained to you. So it's it's going to be intriguing. Going into a holiday weekend, uh, bottom line is that it's going to be light volume out here tomorrow. Now let me show you this. This is really intriguing. In the context, this shouldn't have happened. And I want to show you something. Because what, I, what I've seen on big downdrafts, folks, right, what happens is that volume comes out of nowhere. And it's like, what happened here? Look at this volume, man. Did, did you see this yesterday? What happened yesterday was this. This is on the NYSE. We did 1.2 billion shares. That does not happen. We never should have done that. And let me tell you, yeah, I think, you know, this market is a mess. But that, when I pulled that up this morning, it was like, okay, man, that is a whole different animal because we pull it up all the time in the show. So what that means is this. That means that coming into the close yesterday, you had a monster that decided, I am selling a huge amount of stock. And they did. And... That's not good. <laughs> That's not good if you think you're going to get a bounce, okay? And it's particularly not good when it comes out of nowhere. And that's kind of how that went. Do you know what I mean? Because um, I wish I had actually seen it when I was doing the update. Because if I saw it when I was doing the update, what happens is that I would have had a better idea of the bulk, how the bulk was coming in. You know? But once it shows up like that, and we've gone down. Now, if that showed up and we were going up, that's a whole different animal. And I've seen it both ways, by the way, okay? I've seen it both ways that, like, out of nowhere, all of a sudden it's boop, and it's like, okay, hold it, man. Then you have someone in here, meaning a fund, that's decided that I'm coming into the market, and most times when you see that, you know, you'll, you'll start accelerating on the way up. On the way down, it's a bad scene, man. It's a bad scene because what happens, you can see how quietly it was done. I mean, the Dow wasn't that bad yesterday. You know, I mean, we went down, but it wasn't, you know, a disaster. But when you have an acceleration of volume, we had an acceleration of volume of 500 million shares, man. 500 million shares. That is a huge amount of shares. There's no two ways about that. Let's go take a look at the, uh, let's see where Google's at here. And then I want to look at Twitter because it's going to get interesting coming into October on Twitter. So... Google, okay, so Google right now, let's, yeah, Google wants to test, okay, so Google wants to test 102, right now you're at 109, 102 is wide open, let me pull this back, yeah, the bottom is consolidation is wide open, and let me put this on a monthly now, that's way down there, so 
So this, you know, the, the, what's interesting about this is that I, I can't picture. Uh, I can, I see, I can see Google, Google retesting the 102. Um, I can't see it going to the March highs though. I mean, if we ever had that, that would be like really a disaster. You know? And you know, you got to remember that when you are in a holiday week, which we are, this is the banging around that happens in, in a huge way. It doesn't take much for a bank to push this up, go short. Bring back down, go long, push it up, go short, push it down, go long. I mean, that's, you know, when, when you have a high volatile market like we have, it's pretty cool, actually. You know, as long as you uh, don't get basically married to something. You know what I mean? If you get married to something, you're in trouble, man. That's the bottom line. You know, this is a market where you can trade both sides of the market and you don't go for a lot of bread. That's what, it, if you're trading this intraday, you know. You can go for you know a couple bucks uh, each way, meaning a grand each way or whatever it is, uh, because most of the time what ends up happening it's a snap deal. You know what I mean? Snapping the way down, snapping the way back, and if you can get close to those bottoms, it doesn't take much um, for that to come off. That's what it comes down to. Let's go take a look at the small caps. I haven't looked at the small caps for a long period of time. So the IWM right now, this came down. Yeah, this is, so watch this. The IWM, bottom line, this is, this is too much volume. You can see what happened. Oh, my God. Hold it. One second. Oh, I'm glad I pulled this up. You got you to, we got an ABC down and the small caps. This is going to be a whole different ball game here. Let me put this up. Okay, so let's do this. Wow. Okay, so A point, you got... Uh, Okay, here we go. 195.44 is A. B is out there at 184.60. No, 183.53. You get 11.9, and your C is 185.74. 173. 173.88. So what's happening now is that uh, bottom line, you get an ABC structure down, and the small caps, 173. Where's 173? 173. Yeah, 173 is going to bring. Oh, look at that. That's a high, that's how we came off the last low. No. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow. Dow Industrials are up 10. NASDAQ is down 103. S&Ps are off 9.5. We'll come right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech 
today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 17, NASDAQ's down uh, 113, S&P's off 12 and a half. Let's go to Jeff in Philly. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great, um, man. Yourself? Great. Cool, uh, man. I'm doing great, yeah. I uh, just made a decision on a trade, and uh, I wanted to see if you had any comments on it, if you agreed, or, or you can tell me I screwed up. But I uh, um, got a 95 uh, put on uh, ExxonMobil on uh, Tuesday, and it's been going in my favor for the past three days. I'm up uh, 100, um, I'm up 50%, you know, on the option, and I feel tomorrow, you know, the uh, non-farm payroll's coming out. It's a crapshoot. could go either way. So I thought I'd better capture my profits and not, uh, you know, hold on to it and see which way the, the wind blows tomorrow. Do you think that was um, the best decision to get up now and capture my profits, or would I have been better off, you think, uh, holding on to it and giving it the chance? No, tomorrow? it was a great, great, great trade. Okay, so let, let's talk about this a little. Because, so what Jeff was doing, folks, okay, so in the option market, folks, what happens is that you have, you have options that – expire once a month and they have weekly options. He was trading the weekly options, okay? I trade the weekly options a lot. And a couple of different things happen, folks, okay? You always gotta remember every day, and, and when I trade options, I buy in the money options, whether I'm going long or short, okay? So what happens is that it's always the implied volatility that's in the option at the beginning of the week, particularly when they're closing on Friday, right? So you have two different deals that can take you down, folks, okay? The biggest one that can take you down is just holding the option because they decay every single day. And that's what you really want to be understand about because we're still in a high implied volatility market. You know, so it's great what you did, man. That's that's the bottom line. I, you know, um, I, every night you have to remember that when and it doesn't matter whether it's a put or call, um, you know, I I trade them in the money. So it's just like basically trading the stock, do you know what I'm saying? But you're still paying a premium. Mm. But as long as you're closing them out, the, you know, the bottom line is that your probability goes much higher that you're gonna do fine. And yeah, <laughs> you know? Your probability goes to one, right, after you sell it. <laughs> well, when you sell it, I mean, the, 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 the bottom line is that I've sold plenty, of, let me tell you, I've sold plenty of them in the aspect that I don't wanna take it overnight because I don't even want to lose the implied volatility out of it. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Because you can open them up the next day and basically the stock is not moved. And the bottom line, you know, what ends up happening is that, you know, you, you're buying the same thing at 40 or 50 cents lower than you, than you sold them at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. You know? Right. You get that IV crush. Right. Exactly. After the uh, report comes out. Right? Yeah, exactly. All right. Very good. Well, I appreciate your, okay. uh, your input. I'm just looking for uh, a little confirmation. Yep. You have a great one and a safe one. You too, thank you. Take and care. when you're on that option chain, folks, make sure that you understand that um, the bottom line, when it does expire, because you what you do have, if you're in the, you know, if you trade the, the S&Ps, the bottom line is some of those S&Ps can expire, you know, basically on Tuesdays. So it gets really intriguing uh, inside that market on itself. 
Market wise out here, you know, this bottle it's just gonna keep chopping back and forth. That's what we have out here. Where you get a chop that's going on. Um, you know, I don't expect I expect more chop uh tomorrow. And you know, we'll see where this job number is gonna go. And of course, we're in a market now that good news is bad news. You know, that's the bottom line. If a good jobs number come out, get out of the way in the marketplace because what the market needs now is bad news, and that's unfortunate, but the bottom line, the market needs bad news in order to basically have the market look forward and say, okay, maybe in 2024, they'll start coming down on rates again, you know? Because the bottom line is that you can see these bonds, you can see these notes. In fact, uh, let's go look at this. I wanna look at this a second because you're gonna see something I believe this is the first time this happened in 10 years that, here, I'll put the curve up. There it is right there. So look at this. There's the 10 year. Yeah, there it is right there. Oh, yeah, yesterday it was above it. So look at this. Oh no, here's the 10 year, where's the 10 year? Yeah, here it is, it's still on. So check this out, folks. The two year, the US government will pay more money and, and just in bonds in general, for a two-year, they'll pay a 3.5% versus 3.25% for a 10-year. See, see how that lays out? That's about as intense as you can get. That hasn't happened, my understanding, is about 10 years. That is an inversion that is huge. Huge. Think about it. It's like, okay, so, so what that's about, of course, is that what that's about is that the market sees rates staying higher now, versus going out 10 years. And so the market is saying, I want more money to lend money for you for two years versus 10 years. 10 years, they'll, they'll spread it out, you know, and 3.5 for two years is, is, is pretty wild for treasuries. There's, there's no two ways about that. You know, we, we take a look at, let's go take a look at, uh, let's see where Tesla's running out here. Oh, I know, TWTR. Because what's gonna happen here, so, the, the court, okay, we're 38 bucks. And what the court is expecting, folks, uh, the Delaware Chancery Court, is that they're expecting that in October, this trial is gonna come to fruition. And what ends up happening in that court, by the way, is that it only takes about three to five days that not only will it be, be over, and then the bottom line, they come right out with the decision. And that decision, of course, um, is either gonna be a, ye a yay or no. And what the volatility in those options in October are insane. Um, but what you also have, and keep this in mind if you're trading that stock, is that most times when this happens, most times there's a settlement before the judgment. You know, we'll see if there's going to be a settlement this time before the judgment or if Musk is going to, you know, throw the dice and say, no, I'm going to go for the whole ball of wax. We'll see. The spread on the stock is, uh, you know, still out there. There's no doubt about that. And we'll see whether he's going to get stuck with a company that, uh, you know, he really <laughs> didn't want after the fact. The, uh, yeah, so that that's going to get dicey there's no two ways about that we go take a look at uh let's go take a look at uh, mosaic uh mos mosaic right now you know the low for the year is 30 the high 79 it's trading at 72 right now a couple of these you know equities got a little juice going that being said break look at this breaks right down again man put it on a weekly Yeah, let me show you something here. So this gets interesting. You see how, you know, I've talked about when you break downtrends or even uptrends, but we're talking about downtrend now. When you break a downtrend, what you're looking for is you're looking for wide price spread accelerated volume. You see that, that when this broke, it did not have it. Now watch this, I'm gonna show you Disney. Disney had it. That, that's the type of breaks that I love. Yeah, and as Duffy's saying, those are railroad tracks. And let me pull this back and did, you look at Disney. What you're gonna see, when you broke that downtrend, man, you got volume right off the bat. That's, that's what you look for 
when you're breaking down trends. Wide price spread, accelerated volume, your odds are basically that's equity going higher, go up tremendously. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 60. NASDAQ is uh, down 67. s and are flat. So uh, bottom line is that we'll see how this shakes out uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, it's going to be kind of intriguing. Uh, let's go look at the volume, see where we're at right now. Okay, so in the NYSE right now, you're at 626. That's still pretty heavy, man. And it's going to be a lower low. Uh, that's that's going to come up at 850 or something. You know, if this NYSE, and you know, hopefully when I do this update, folks, okay, um, I will get uh, that those numbers for you. Because if this NYSE ever comes in again at a 1.1 billion or something, that's going to be a bad scene, man. Because what that is, that would be basically saying that there's larger players that have sold into this marketplace. You know, so we'll see where that shakes out. Um, you know, the Dow, the S&P is just went positive by two. You know, the Dow... Uh, is going to have a decent hammer, and that's what you're basically looking for, for a bounce. There's no doubt about that. So, we had a low out here today, yeah, and the Dow of uh, 31,219, and you're at 31,591, you know, so... That's what you are looking for for a bounce. There's no doubt about that. And it's about time we do bounce because we just went straight down from 34,000 to uh, 31,000. 
So, and you also come into, you can see what you're coming into. You're coming into the chop off the, off the lows, you know. Uh, the composite, we take a look at the composite. The composite out here. Oh, the, you know, it's going to be interesting here. Oh, man. Okay. This is going to be cool. One second. We might have uh, maybe the MVOLQE. So we're going to look at the volume that was out here. Uh, you know what, folks? This might be crazy. We might have another ABC structure down inside of the composite. If the composite has more than 4.6 billion shares, you get another ABC down in the composite. And I'll have that number for you. The, the composite, as well as the NYSE, goes to about uh, 10 pass. But the bottom line is that we'll see whether we have that number or not. Stay right there. Well, oh. Have a great night. Have a safe night, folks. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 o'clock in the morning. Great show, folks. Look at him, folks.